welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. Education and health officials consider several possible COVID-related scenarios and responses ahead of the second school term. The refurbishing of the CDC buildings nears completion. And CARICOM nations ensure they are not left out by the COVID-19 vaccine rush. The opening of the second term of the school year to face-to-face -face instruction is critical not only for the education sector, but the nation as a whole. So says Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer. On Monday, 11 January 2021, students will return to the classrooms guided though by strict COVID-19 protocols. Dr. Meyer says having schools closed for the better part of last year has had a detrimental impact on students, teachers and parents. The ministries of education and health, she informed, during an update to the nation, have devised several COVID-related scenarios and responses for the reopening of schools. The possibility of an individual or student getting ill at school, a member of a family that is in close contact in quarantine, you know, a, a possible teacher or staff member who tests current for, positive for quarantine, quite a few scenarios and looked at them in depth, giving the medical, the scientific, but also the human element of how to deal with those situations on a school level. Chief Environmental Health Officer Paka Ragnanan says given the experience gathered last year in managing COVID-19, the Ministry of Health is confident that school can resume in the physical setting and any major catastrophe can be averted. The, the Cashfish Comprehensive School experience was just one such experience and you would re remember the domino kind of effect that this one experience had on the island. The question is really, if there is a situation at one individual school, should every school on the island remain closed as a result? That is the question. And therefore, in all other business sectors, so we've had uh, um, persons uh, at, at different business places who have contracted the disease, but have we seen all business, businesses shut down on the island? So we need to look at it very, very carefully and take very strategic approaches in terms of how we do things. The other thing is that we are asking as much as possible for us not to stigmatize and to discriminate. And that is, that is very important. Sometimes uh, uh, we've heard about persons talking about uh, a contact of a contact of a contact. So you're not even living that person, but because you're a family member, you are singled out. As, as being a potential contact. At the Ministry of Health, we have fine-tuned our contact tracing capability. And like I've said, we have improved significantly on our state of preparedness. And therefore, we are in a position now to work with our community nursing, to work with our epidemiology unit in terms of contact tracing and have very clear procedures and guidelines to do contact tracing in a school and who is at risk at a school if it's one classroom if it's an entire block, if it's a whole form, if it's the entire school, and therefore it, the, the, the procedures would kick in once they have to. Mr. Ragnanan says a strategic approach will be taken if there were to be COVID-related cases at any school. We need to look at uh, the, the school in question, the population of that school, the at-risk groups, uh, the numbers that we have. So again, there may be situations where if you have one case in a school, depending as to how many is exposed to that case, you may have to call, close back that school. Um, you may have 10 cases in a school, but depending on how it's managed, you may not have to close the entire school. So it depends on the dynamics. There are different dynamics that would determine the, the, the way forward. And, and so we're looking at different modalities and uh, different plans as to how do we best manage a, a situation of that nature. So we don't just pick 10 or 15 just like this. Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan. The Ministry of Education, meanwhile, created an upbeat atmosphere ahead of the second school term with a live concert Friday aired on the national television network NTN. Here's an excerpt. 
We are endeavoring to set the right tone to welcome you back into the classrooms on Monday. So if you can dance along, do that. Step away from your television screen, maybe hug your tablet a little closer. We want you to participate fully, even though you're not here in the studio with us. But we're doing this for our students, for our teachers, for all the people who have worked tirelessly over the last few weeks and months in particular. <laughs> Hey, you there, you who are watching, I wonder how you're feeling. Wasn't it all so confusing how things just kept on changing? So before September, I am sure you remember. Lord, I give you glory because of who you are. I'll give you praise. I know your life, I felt your pain. I know your joys and your shames. Sometimes it feels like life walks over you, or like you're a pity. And you can view the entire concert on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page and YouTube and on replay on NTN. The Department of Education has extended kindergarten registration for the academic year 2021-2022 for schools within the Castries Basin from January 11 to the 18th, 2021, online at www.kregistration.education.gov.lc. This late registration exercise will facilitate parents and guardians who have not registered their child award for entry into kindergarten for the following schools. Anglican Infant, Vidbute Primary, St. Aloysius R.C. Boys Infant, Ava Maria Girls Infant, Camille Henry Memorial, Carmen Rennie Memorial, Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist, and Mondidor Primary. Parents and guardians should snap photos of the required documents and upload them as instructed on the website. For further information or clarification, please call 468-5259, 468-5258 or 720 720-3252. As the Caribbean prepares for the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine, communications and health promotion specialists from across the region have been honing their risk communication skills so that they can effectively respond to people's concerns, opinions, emotions and reactions. At the same time, CARICOM leaders and agencies are pressing on with avenues to access the vaccine. More from Toussaint King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. Having a vaccine alongside other treatments for COVID-19 is being viewed as the exit strategy from the pandemic. But as the larger, richer nations of the world queue up for Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, where does that leave CARICOM countries? CARICOM's Assistant Secretary General for Human and Social Development, Dr. Douglas Slater, told CARICOM Newstime in an invited comment that not only does the huge demand and cost for the first COVID-19 vaccine present access challenges for CARICOM countries, but also the logistical arrangement to receive, store, and distribute the vaccine would require significant investments by CARICOM member states. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine requires a deep freeze delivery chain and freezer storage facility at minus 70 degrees Celsius. We do have hopes of access, mm -hmm. but we, we cannot yet tie down exactly how much and when. Another challenge is that the lead vaccines that have either been approved, as you may have heard, the Pfizer, or about being approved. Yes. They are expensive. 
and two, the logistics required to use them may well be beyond the capability of most of our member states. Why? Because they require ultra um, low temperatures for storage that is not the standard storage temperatures that most of our member states use to store their vaccines. And therefore, if we are going to use them significantly, there might be need for investment or expenditure in new, scarce, expensive equipment to store them. So how do CARICOM member states access a vaccine to combat COVID-19? Dr. Slater said PAHO WHO is supporting its member countries, including those of CARICOM, through the access to COVID-19 tools, ACT Accelerator. The COVID-19 Vaccine Global Access COVAC facility is a vaccine pillar of the ACT Accelerator and a globally coordinated mechanism to provide equal access and affordable options for all participating countries. COVAX is co-led by Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, and the WHO. Gavi is the COVAX facility administrator and is responsible for making investments across a broad portfolio of promising vaccine candidates. Dr. Slater says CARICOM member states were encouraged to join this facility and many have already done so. Meantime, Barbados's Prime Minister Honorable Mia Motley has told the sixth edition of the Caribbean Economic Forum that the implosion of the tourism sector is placing immediate and immense pressure on governments across the region to meet the decline in earning power of residents and firms. In the case of Barbados, Honorable Motley says rather than recapitalizing the social security system, a government diverted resources to support workers in the hospitality industry and to keep the hotel stock open even in the absence of tourists. We are still finding ourselves, as we've indicated, dealing with the major sector of tourism, where rather than seeking to simply go and recapitalize the social security system, we took a decision that we needed to have a job support for the workers at the same time as we need to be able to make sure that we can keep the hotel stock open because if the hotels close, tiles will start to blow, um, bathrooms stop working, plumbing stops working, and all of these things will inevitably lead to a deterioration of the capital stock, such that when the tourists are ready to come back, we will not have any hotels to appropriately accommodate them in, in, in good order. Prime Minister Motley has called for the establishment of a Caribbean Recovery and Resilience Trust Fund to support recovery from natural and other disasters, including COVID-19. The CDC buildings were constructed in an effort to provide housing to those who lost their homes to the 1948 fire in Castries. The project was funded by the Colonial Development Corporation, hence the apartment complex being referred to as the CDC. The National Housing Corporation is responsible for the Castries Housing Estate, commonly referred to as the Old CDC, and the Darling Road Housing Estate, commonly referred to as the New CDC. The corporation embarked on the beautification and restoration of the Darling Road Housing Estate, which comprises 10 apartment blocks and 42 shopping units. Sidonia Childs is the acting managing director of the National Housing Corporation. We're taking a holistic approach to remedying a lot of the issues that we're having within the city, within the CDCs. Um, we started a rodentification project with the Ministry of Health sometime in June and it ran until December. Minister of Responsibility for External Affairs and Parliamentary Representative for Castries Central, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobren, explained that the project is beneficial on many fronts addressing the needs of residents while providing much-needed employment at this time. I want to say how very pleased I am, uh, how much I welcome the opportunity for some of our constituents to find employment. As this work progressed, of course, we would have liked to employ many more persons, but uh, we look for other opportunities to ensure that we 
continue to provide employment for the constituents. For us, this is just the first step to really enhancing uh, this area for our residents. Of course, there are other concerns that we would like to address in terms of the general upkeep, the security, the safety, and the overall aesthetics of the environment. Contract on the project Cyril Donnelly indicated that residents, shop owners, and the public have been very accommodating and understanding during the works. Presently, we remain about 48 workers and all. I divided the, the project onto seven pieces. I have seven subcontractors. Each of them have a building. But all in all, the tenants are happy, public eyes are happy, and I'm happy that I'll deliver on time or ahead of time. As part of the project, civil works will also be conducted and includes the resurfacing of car parks and landscaping. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. Primus Hutchinson is up next with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible and remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Tan Janel, Monsieur Madame de Batman, Kine Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement Cette Ci, GIS, et Television National PIA, NTN, Capazoto, Nouvelle Aquiol, Visito Primus Hutchinson. Quand préparation qu'a faite pour saison 9 la saison de la commencé lundi le 11 janvier, ça c'est disons l'école à cette ci ministre qui va pour éducation on est docteur Gail Rigobert j'ai fait un appel pour les parents les étudiants et public là généralement pour prendre une bonne précaution pour suivre toutes ces règles qui a gouverné protection contre maladie corona à effort pour réduire à sa capacité pour continuer à se manger l'école pays a été fermée en mois d'octobre l'année passée au résultat des augmentations de maladie corona du moins tant ça là Ministère de l'Éducation et Travail à ce plan pour te virer ouvert l'école à Javier l'année ici à Badjid, chef officier d'éducation et département santé. Discussion ça là, te ni participation les officiers d'éducation pays à mettre et maîtresse l'école. Les instituteurs et bien syndicats, union, les teachers, bien instituteurs. Discussion été faite pour les teachers et l'autre travail en cette école là pour commencer le travail. Depuis le 4e jour en mois de janvier 2021, mes préparations pour l'école commencé officiellement le le 11 janvier, c'est là c'est le dit qu'avenir. Docteur Rigobert Bayasso en cela qui ministère toujours ni commitment pour garder des affaires les étudiants avec les instituteurs et pour protéger l'environnement, continuer ça ni tout outil qui nécessaire pour point conduite responsabilité qui l'école là ni et que yo ministre ministre là dit ministre de l'éducation dit ajouter aussi qui yo ni responsabilité pour ça et protection les étudiants et les instituteurs et leur travail en ce l'école pays et que porte ça qu'a porté haut importance pour yo donc très rigobot tu présent en studio GIS NTN à ce puis chef officier éducation docteur Fiona Maya et chef officier de santé l'environnement par Ragnanan en parmi l'autre officier côté yo défricher ses plans pour ces l'école l'année ici en parlant de ça chef officier éducation docteur Fiona Mayo déclare que les étudiants qui trouvé les champs libres là pour soulager yo hors masque à soufflage selon docteur Mayo ces étudiants en cet élève qui ni besoin ni un petit soulagement pour quitter 
euh, avec point pour point une grande inspiration euh, sans service et masse là à souffrir d'ailleurs la caïni côté l'école c'est ça tire masse là puis point chance pour relax body mais aussi nous ni bagaille qu'on fait shield so si mal à ni un petit problème parce que tu fais masse là là puis d'ailleurs yo ça mettez fait shield yo aussi avec nous qu'à essayer pour toujours dire laver la main yo même quand nous te qu'il fait même si nous te ni avant nous te dit go wim mon mari était malade c'est même quand tu ces bagages ça là nous voulait dire avec faire changer nous toujours ni pour faire pour tien santé nous ou aussi mandé à bot um, placement desk et puis chaise comme on dit assise ça nous a joint c'est from WHO World Health Organization qui ka gardé pour santé tout en la terre ka dit Sle ou sa mette, pli ou sa mette um, plas, c'est bon. Moun ka di a bo 3%. C'est bon, mais l'année de temps, il paraît toujours possible. Sa yo ka di, c'est pour essayer, pour encourager maman la pour faire l'autre bagay. Même quand nous te di avant, pour laver la main yo. So, nous j'a gade se l'école la, nous ni moun an l'école la ka gade, nous ka gade kome chèz nous ni, kome ban nous ni. Tout ce bagage cela nous a essayé fait avec tout différents départements qui indication pour garder aussi avec santé pour garder comment nous sortir de maman là qui en manière yo pas qu'à affecter en dans n'importe manière qui négative. Ministre éducation, tu organisé aussi un concert à studio GIS NTN vendredi après-midi par les instituteurs pour célébrer le commencement de la saison de l'école 2021. Division qui n'est pas responsabilité pour le service des hommes en ministère de l'égalité. Tu sais, le bras, il y a un lot de cette liste qui vivait une seule année. C'est Victor Rosemond Smith, qui fait le 1er janvier 1921 en Paris, Saltibus, Choisey, avec ses celles en 10 enfants qui vivent toujours. M. Smith, c'était un cultivateur, un pharma qui était une passion pour les animaux et les jardins. Il aussi terme jouer guitare et l'histoire a été plus jeune. Pour 10 ans après ça, M. Smith a resté à St. Louis' home et c'est l'équipe plus grande citoyen et institution. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle nouvelle. Mesdames, je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour vous remercier pour vous remercier. Je vous remercie pour vous remercier. Je vous remercie pour vous remercier. Je vous remercie pour tout le monde. Un bon fin de semaine et ça c'est pour vous vivre. Vous êtes au Chanel. Merci à Pill Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.